Hey everybody, good morning. It is Sunday, I think April 23rd, um, or maybe 24th. Yeah, all right, back up for just a minute here. Okay, so one of the first things I had to figure out was what size of a camper am I gonna put on this thing? So I have a 2016 Toyota Tundra SR5 TRD Pro off-road. And no, it's not four-wheel drive, but they call it off-road because they put some Bilstein shocks in the back of it and basically lift the ass end up like a, you know, female cat in heat. So anyway, the difference between the two Toyota Tundras is you have an access cab, which is what I've got here on the left, and then you have a crew cab, which is there on the right. Now, the access cab has a six and a half foot bed versus the crew max, which has a five foot bed. So that right there pretty much determined how big of a camper I'm going to be using or building. So the dimensions I chose for the truck camper is going to be 48 inches uh, across the bottom. So this will fit perfectly between the wheel wells, which is a little over 49 inches. The sides of the tub extend up 24 inches, which is just a little higher than the side rails of the truck or the side walls, I should say, of the truck bed. And then the wings come out about 16 inches on either side of it. So though you may think that the wings actually sit on the sides of the truck bed, they do not. There's actually some space there and I've allowed for, I believe it's two or three inches between the top of the side, side walls of the truck bed and um, the actual wings here. So the bottom piece here will fit right in the middle between the wheel wells, rise up above the sides of the truck bed, and then the wings will come out 16 inches on either side. Now the main structure of the truck camper is almost entirely built out of uh, two inch uh, king span insulation foam, which you can get at Lowe's. There is a Foamular version, which is uh, the Pink Panther version of uh, the two inch, but it was extremely hard to find and the compressive strength wasn't quite as much as what it was for the uh, two inch Kingspan. So two inch Kingspan, 250 PSI uh, is the compressive strength on it and it's got an R10 value. Comes in sheets of four by eight, which uh, actually worked out rather well. There wasn't a whole lot of trimming that had to be done because the uh, obviously the, the width of it is 48 inches for the piece that goes into the bottom of the bed of the truck. Uh, and then each of the side pieces dropped up 24 inches. So even though I did have to uh, make smaller cuts to get the two 24s, what I was able to do was the excess that was cut off was used to do the wings on the, the side of the tub. And then of course I had to use a, another sheet in order to do the complete backing or the, the backboard uh, I guess you would actually call it a bulkhead, which would then go up against uh, the back of the truck window, or if that's where it would sit. It doesn't actually touch, but it's literally just a bulkhead, and it also extends up 48 inches. So I completely stole an idea from a guy on YouTube who also built one of these, and, and actually it made a whole lot of sense. Rather than epoxying or gluing the boards together edge on edge you you basically only have one point of contact and that's on the edge what he had done was did almost like a like a tongue and groove or a notch uh, method and i basically just duplicated that by building a jig out of uh, one by fours just screwing them together and putting i believe it was three inches uh, between each spacing and then used a hot wire in order to cut out the notches spacing every other one and then after I reversed it did the exact same thing and then on the corresponding pieces I just offset it by one so that they would all interlock so basically on that method you have three points of contact that you can epoxy to the other board or glue it with the other board in my particular case I used and a uh, two-part epoxy for the majority of the gluing uh, to bond the two surfaces together and in some cases I also use some uh, industrial strength Gorilla Glue. Once they were cut out I simply uh, went back when everything was said and done, used an orbital sander and just uh, cleaned up the edges and made sure they were good and flat so there was a nice tight fit.
Okay, so hopefully this won't make you absolutely sick. So <laughs> to start off with, this of course is the base of the tub. This is the sidewalls of the tub. And then this of course is the, um, I'm not really sure what the hell you would call them, but uh, basically the sides that go over the sides of the bed. So um, as you can see here, 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 and here, this was the notching process that I had started uh, down around the base, which came up to the side. So everything's kind of interlocked. So rather than just being you know glued, on uh, one side, it's actually glued, uh, depending on which piece it is, it's actually glued on at least two sides, if not uh, technically four, I guess. So you you know have the each, whoops, where I'm at, right here, side, side, back side. Of course, there's obviously nothing on the front, but then the process is repeated on the bottom sides and the sides. So just to add a little bit extra, Hopefully, uh, more surface for it to actually uh, contact. Now, something to keep in mind when you're working with foam, whether you're doing a foamy camper or foamy trailer or foamy truck camper, doesn't matter. Uh, this isn't precision engineered material, okay? And the only way to keep it somewhat square was basically doing most of it by measurement. So when I'm gluing these sides up uh, from the bottom there to the top and then with the wings out, it was using boards uh, with clamps in order to basically measure it from one side to the other and then you know try to duplicate it on the other side to get it as close to square and level as uh, possibly can so yeah it's not easy because uh, you're not going to make perfect 90 degree angles but um, certainly you can try uh, to do your best and all things considered it, it's actually fairly well uh, squared uh, if you look at measurements. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Now, once all the seams were epoxied together, I used a little bit of epoxy along with some wood flour mixed into it, which is why you see it as a brown color once it dries up. And I basically use that to fill up any voids or gaps that happen to be between the uh, where they're glued together initially, because no matter how hard I tried there were still a little few gaps here and there so basically what I did was just do a very shallow pour and then went back across with a sander and uh, basically sanded everything down smooth uh, at least as smooth as I possibly could in order to um, uh, just give a, a surface a nice even surface later on for uh, when I go to mount carpeting or wood or whatever it happened to be so whether it was on the wing like you see here or uh, if it was on one of the walls, basically it's the same process. So basically on all the corners, uh, the 90 degree corners where uh, walls joined walls or uh, the wings joined the walls or the, the wings joined the tub, didn't matter. Uh, all of them were filled here uh, with epoxy and then sanded down smooth. And then the edges themselves were actually rolled over a little bit. Uh, just to get rid of the hard 90 degree angle there because after we're done here we're actually going to be taking uh, some fiberglass tape and reinforcing reinforcing these edges again so there'll be two layers of cloth going on here just to reinforce the uh, the edges I mean even without it it's pretty stout but uh, you know <laughs> when you're not a professional and you're not an engineer you tend to over engineer the living crap out of everything so yeah you can pretty much stand on this thing and it ain't going anywhere
idiot. I just got done talking for five minutes with the camera not running. Dumbass. All right, anyway, so what am I using? Uh, so again, the fiberglass is 1708. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, basically the weave on the front is, I think it's 17 ounce. And then on the back side is stranded, um, poly, uh, stranded uh, fiberglass fibers uh, randomly placed. And so I believe that's eight ounces. So 17 would be the uh, ounce of cloth on the top. And then the 08 would be the ounces of uh, fibers on the bottom. I believe that's it. If I'm wrong, I'll post something. It's kind of hard to remember. What I am using is uh, West Systems Epoxy. I was, I had started using uh, Total Boat, um, which is fine, but um, I, I found a couple of issues with it uh, as far as just the, I don't know, the viscosity or, you know, how it hardened up. And it's definitely got a different smell than what uh, West Systems Epoxy does. I don't know if that's in the refining or what, but, you know, kind of give you an idea. So I'm using West Systems uh, Epoxy Part 1 in a gallon, and then I'm using the 205 Fast Hardener. I originally was using the slow hardener on the wings. I ran out, had to buy more. They were out of the slow hardener, so I wound up using the uh, fast hardener. Now, the problem with that is you don't have a lot of working time before it sets up on you. And then you kind of SOL if you do. And that's the problem that we had, throw that off, we had here. Um, the white that you see is actually fibers that were not penetrated uh, completely by the epoxy. So what wound up happening was this started to dry uh, very quickly and turned hard. And then the, the top of it would not get any underneath. And I was using the bubble popper and everything and I still couldn't get it. But for the rest of it, a um, couple of little white spots, very, very little. There's a few here and there, and uh, it's not even, that's a piece of fiber. Um, I did not put wood on the 45s. I was going to, but there's actually three layers of fiberglass that is now in the corners, as well as being up here on the top corners. And you might even be able to see it. Um, so this is the top piece of fiberglass that just went over the entire bottom of it. That's the edge of uh, one piece of six inch uh, corner reinforcement. And then there's the second piece, yeah, right down there. So there's one layer that started a little bit deeper on the bottom that wrapped over the top, just inside those joints. There's another piece from there that wraps over the top, the top of the joints down here. So that's two layers. And then there's a, and actually in here it would be four layers because you got the one main piece that goes over here that overlaps and then there's the large piece that comes down so there's actually almost four la uh, layers of fiberglass so one two three and four so i think the corners are going to be fine the same thing here there's a one one piece two piece and then three piece i don't think it's going to be an issue once i flip it over and actually stand on it that will that will that would be the defining factor. So yeah, base is done. This will all be coated in uh, bed liner and uh, I can finally start on the walls. So, all right, more to come.